Ruth McKendry. I am the Global Head of Marketing for Blackhawk. Our mission is to create meaningful connections with payments. So we help organizations, big and small, uh, leverage payments to help create better experiences, whether that is through digital wallets, gift cards, or rewards. So um, we work with a lot of the folks, you've probably bought something from us or engaged with us if you've bought a gift card off of the hook or maybe used your Venmo wallet in store. Uh, that's a lot of what we do and we help power um, with our partners. Not always great. I'm, I'm not super successful with my husband all of the time, uh, but we're here to talk about marketing. So, you know, I, I think Really, that statement was born on the fact that we create categories and we're really trying to disrupt um, fairly legacy industries with a lot of the technology we're introducing, right? We're trying to change how people are paying in retail and we're trying to change how people gift and how they think about rewarding. And I think what's become more true in the last year than ever is people just don't have attention spans. We just don't have time, right? It's I get up in the morning and I'm on Zoom meetings back to back to back. And I, I hear that that's a fairly similar and common experience, regardless of industry, regardless of role. So it's really our job as marketers to change somebody's mind quickly, right? And, and it distills down to good technology, right? Which I think you and your audience are no stranger to. So how are you targeting and how are you understanding intent and really segmenting your buyers down to fairly complex data sets? And then how do you get your messaging so tight and specific? And most importantly, it's not about you, it's about them, right? So I think more than ever in the crazy world that we're living in right now, people are evolving and they are changing. I'm gonna try really hard not to use pivot or unprecedented in my own context on this. Um, you know, People are evolving and changing so much in today's environment that you need to have super sharp messaging and you need to make sure that you're changing that frequently. We get VOCs weekly from our sales teams, um, and we make sure that our messaging and we're looking at intent signals from the market on a weekly basis, because what people were looking for last week may have changed this week. And so we're making sure that we've got our segmentation, our targeting down really tight, and that we've got our messaging really, really crisp, because it comes down to one ad, right? And you may need to make sure that you've got the right surround sound approach to your targeting, but that your messaging is super crisp that when somebody wants to show up um, and is ready to hear that message that you can change their mind in 30 seconds. Um, you're not gonna be able to change it when you want to, but you need to make sure that you're there um, when they're ready to hear that message um, in the right medium, in the right vehicle. Um, so that has proven pretty successful for us. It's really just about listening and it's about targeting. Um, so it's tried and true principles of marketing. We just have to be a lot sharper in this day and age. Yeah, and you know, we've like many diversified industries and organizations, we've seen uh, we've seen some parts of our business trail a little bit compared to where we thought we would be, and we've seen other areas in hyper growth mode, specifically around digital payments and digital wallets. So, in the industry, the payments industry, we've been trying to really get digital wallet adoption in retail. We've been trying to get consumers to purchase things like digital gift cards online for years and years and years, right? We had all the technology and the plumbing, really getting consumers to kind of cross that adoption hurdle, right? Where digital wallet payments were more, less of a novelty and more of a necessity. Well, enter COVID and now people want contactless payments, right? They've actually, they are, they are driving to it at a rapid rate of adoption because now I don't want to touch a pin pad. It actually, it feels like a negative experience because I don't, you know, I don't know who just touched it. I don't know what's on it. I've you know, pureled my hands beyond all belief at this point, right? So anything we can do in our hand from our phone has a, a better sense of security and safety because of a lot of the reasons that COVID has brought to bear. So what we've seen as far as the use of digital wallets, taking a captive payment, think Venmo, think your loyalty points, using them in store without touching a pin pad or without swiping anything, right? Consumers want to do it. Companies need to adopt it nowadays. So we've seen 
huge growth in that side of our business. Um, really, the digital payments and the digital adoption of payments has, has been a huge catalyst over the last nine months. And then also consumers' comfortability with um, buying things like digital gift cards online, right? Always a steady and, and good growth business for us. But when you think about the fact that now I'm not going to travel to see you, but I still want to wish you happy birthday. So we're seeing areas like digital gifting have triple digit growth for us because consumers are now moving from what they used to purchase in store and, you know, drive over to your buddy's barbecue and hand them a gift card and give them a bottle of wine. Now people are sending an e-gift and they're, you know, sending you alcohol via Drizzly and some of those things. So we've just seen channel shift and behaviors really shift um, in the payment space as as we've seen across many other areas of retail and commerce. Yeah, you know, I mean, it really breaks down to a lot of the fundamentals. It's about the people, the process, and the technology. So working with our teams, we all understand that we need to listen. We need to have more frequent and shorter touch points with all of our constituents. So it's the sales organizations, it's getting a better real-time pulse from the customers, it's running research at a more rapid rate. Um, the process, right, it, it's really breaking down any barriers to launching in market. So it's short-circuiting some review cycles, it's getting better internal team planning done and, and becoming more nimble as an organization. And we also luckily um, have a really strong tech stack that we're able to launch things into market super quickly. We're able to shift our targeting. Um, the last year has brought, right, it's brought challenges in some markets, but it's also created entirely new markets for payments organizations. So if you think about all of the community relief that's either being given by government organizations or given by private and nonprofit organizations, those, all, of, all of those funds need to get handed out the recipients, right? And it's now more important than ever that that be done digitally without contact, right? And in a way that people can use them for what they really need relief for, whether it's rent or whether it's food insecurity or, or whatever. And so companies like ours have really been able to fill that gap, right? Whereas a physical good might have been given out previously. Now people are really looking at payments um, to help support relief because a lot of the need is now more of some of the fundamental financial um, instability that's happening in market. So it's been really interesting to see different markets and areas emerge um, around COVID and the last nine months. And how do you manage that across multiple markets? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> you know, and it's getting really, really good about listening and understanding because to your point, you know, I, the UK might open up and then California shuts down and then Sydney's up, Melbourne's out, you know, and so we're, we're really trying to manage and make sure that our messaging is not reactive, but that it's, it's consistent and we're striking the fine balance between overreacting to, you know, we're in shutdown, do this, um, but it's more of a persistent messaging and precise targeting um, knowing that people are going to need to look at kind of their short-term needs and satisfy those. I mean, email. I'm not at my office. So <laughs> um, if people want to find me, I'm at teresa.mckendry at bhnetwork.com. Uh, I'm always on LinkedIn, so you can find me there too. Um, so this has been fun. I hope everybody, I wish everybody lots of success out there and hope everybody stays safe and uh, you know, <laughs> we'll continue to grow. It's all good stuff.